You guys are crazy to have a crew that small <laughs> and to be able to pull that off. You put yourself through objectionably bad times. <laughs> Training. It makes good stories. It makes so. great stories. <laughs> My name is Michelle Carre, and I'm a YouTuber. And I'm Stephen Lim, also a YouTuber. Well, first of all, this is so cool to sit with you in this capacity because we both knew each other at the very beginning of our digital foray. I don't even know what to call our career industry, but... Yeah. training um, grounds, whatever you want to call it, yeah. It's really special to see you here, Stephen, and especially tonight to witness you receive such a special award in front of so many industry titans. I'm just really proud of you. I, I just had the urge to deflect and be like, no, uh, you. let's talk about you. <laughs> I'm so bad at talking about myself, so but I, will, but I will, let me receive that first yes. <laughs> and accept it. Thank you, thank you. It's crazy because we started off at the same place and I feel like I always knew you would be extremely wildly successful because <laughs> yeah, you were always the hard, like I thought I was the hardest worker when we were at BuzzFeed together. Well, you 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 were. I was not, no, I was not. there was only one person that was like, I, I would say worked harder than me, it was probably you there. Oh, well, thank you, that's so generous of you to say. I mean, you went from, you know, being the star of one of the fastest growing YouTube channels in the world, to helming your own company, you're CEOing, you're, you're handling operations, and you are like really taking on a studio role in our world, which is unique and really special. Yeah. How has that transition been for you? It's interesting because my time at BuzzFeed was so instrumental to me being able to create Watcher because I learned a lot of what to do, what not to do, a lot of the, the magic of internet content creation. And yeah, it was tough to leave though because I was at on Worth It. You know, we ran that show even to the day that I, you know, until last year. So that ran for seven years, even after I left. And it was hard to let go of that because that was like the biggest thing I'd ever been a part of. But yeah, leaving BuzzFeed was like me growing wings and, and saying the Moana thing. You know, I just felt like I wanted to see what was on the other side. And uh, it's been very gratifying to be able to do it myself. And, and, and now that I do it myself, I look around at the other people who do that yourself, Sophia, uh, the Try Guys. There's so many more that I'm missing right now, but who have all been able to be successful and even more successful. Uh, it's crazy, because uh, some would think that like, oh, BuzzFeed propped you up, or BuzzFeed propped me. It's like, people think that, but it's, you know, the ones that's, that stood the test of time were the ones actually who had star power. So yeah, you, you've been doing an amazing job. I feel like we always talk about your stuff and like study it and like, how did they get that shot? <laughs> There was a shot on one of your last videos. I saw the trailer for it, the pirate one. Yeah. It's like, yeah. how did you get those shots? We had a... <laughs> this is me being selfish now. What did you do? Yeah, I mean, I have a, a really, really special situation where my life partner is also my business partner. Yeah. And that's such an interesting thing to, to get to explore together. And he comes from the traditional film background, like, won a bunch of film awards in college and beyond and has amazing short films um, and you know studied under some of the best documentarian and yeah. Oscar winner producers and I'm from like the digital space of figure it out as, as, as you go so merging our two worlds has been really really special to experience yeah. that's, but that's um, the coolest thing when I see that in restaurants too where it's like you have like a person who's like from a French background and a person from like a uh, like Indonesian background, and they start a restaurant, and it's like, and then you go to Indian, Indonesian French restaurant. Like those are the best yes. restaurants to me. <laughs> so this is like kind of seeing that happen with your with your content. It's like, okay, you got the best of digital and the best of film coming together. So anyway, back to the shot though. I feel like I'm watching Pirates of the Caribbean watching yeah. your 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 video. What? What? How? 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 Was it cheap? I'm guessing it wasn't it cheap. It's was not cheap. You're in the freaking ocean. Yeah. Um, are, are you referring to like the aerial? The aerial's stuff coming did? in. The ones coming around. You guys are like, you know, doing stuff <laughs> on the on the ship. Yeah. I mean, you know, what's what's really wonderful about the the team that I get to work with, and and what a privilege it is to get to say, 
getting to work with a team. And I'm sure you relate to this too, running Watcher. But I think that crew was five to seven people. No it was way. a very small crew. Wow. And we just had uh, this fantastic drone operator. So the, the film shoot took place in France. Um, and we found like a local Parisian drone op and he came on and just annihilated the shoot. That's um, cool. So, I, I mean, honestly, I think that's, that's one of my favorite parts of getting to run a production company now is to bring together lots of people whose talent I think wouldn't necessarily be be seen or showcased in the traditional studio system. And I, honestly, I think that's why tonight is, is so special because we have so many people who have ascended through all of the hardship of the studio system and people who have, like us, just like circumnavigated it in some ways and uh, allowed like normally muted voices to be heard. You guys are crazy to have a crew <laughs> that small and to be able to pull that off. And you were doing that, you, you per yourself, you put yourself through objectionably bad times. <laughs> Training. It makes good stories. It makes so. great stories. <laughs> but do you have fun doing it? Oh my gosh, of course. If it wasn't fun, I wouldn't do it. I genuinely think that everything you want is on the other side of fear and that, you know, diamonds are made under pressure, all of that. And and I feel that the privilege of getting to host and, and produce Challenge Accepted is getting to live that over and over and over yeah. again. And the privilege I have of getting to experience so many once in a lifetime experiences, yeah. it, it, you know, makes me really appreciate the human experience and and the people who are professionals in some of the most interesting and unique parts of the world. This is great because I love talking about you and not myself. Oh, well, I'm about I, to talk about you. So. Real quick, I do want to just add, I am all for the Michelle Carre Emmy train. We got to make this happen, and like the internet, we must all collectively, collectively come together and find somebody that we can all support. And I think we've all decided it's you. It's going to be challenge accepted. We want your show to be the one. And so oh if I can, God. you know, if we can put that in the universe somewhere, thank you. I, I've been doing that wherever I can. Oh my gosh! Thank yeah, you, Steven. You guys put such good stuff out. Thank and you. And it's all around you willing to put your body and your physical limits to the test. Well, I want to know more about, for you, running Watcher from an operational capacity because you have such a big team. Mm. And something that is unique about the digital space of entertainment is that we're not only on-camera hosts, but you're also um, managing people. You are also making creative decisions. You're making difficult business decisions. Yeah. What has been the biggest obstacle you've had to overcome? Yeah, you know, I would say the number one guiding light of building the operation and the business at Watcher has been leading with compassion and grace toward our employees. And I always say to them, by the way, it starts off by getting really good people. It doesn't, doesn't work unless you get the best of the best in the biz. But I truly believe I want Watcher to serve them more than they serve Watcher. And if they can leave the company at the end of the day and, and say, yeah, I think I got more out of this experience than I gave, that makes me really happy. Um, so just trying to find ways to give our employees good experiences. I don't know, I think it's worked so far. I think our team loves to be at Watcher. It's not always easy. You have issues, right? There's always gonna be an issue day to day. But at um, the end of the day, it's, you know, we really just care about each other and show compassion and grace to each other. And that's, I think, been the key for our team. Yeah. yeah, I mean, when I think about my original goals coming into this industry, I I wanted to be a part of a show of some kind and 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 you know, play some part on a team maybe on TV, let's say. Yeah. And it's so interesting to see how the requirements of what we do digitally have forced us to ascend to like showrunner status immediately, <laughs> yeah. which is not a normal trajectory. No. <laughs> No, you got to go from production coordinator, production manager to yeah. Producer. It's like there's like 30 steps. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know what a blessing it is to to get to go there very quickly and man is it like trying to learn how to fly a plane as it's crash landing at times. For sure, which you've done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I sometimes I'm like, damn, like did we do this the wrong way? Like should we just have kept it small and uh just, you know, 
been vloggers with our own iPhones, you know, like vlogging ourselves. And while I do really love that kind of content and I watch, like, consume a lot of that, it, it, I don't know. I just, I love challenging myself. And I know that only with the team can you get that far. You can't do it alone. And so we've, yeah. we've invested in the team. And you, you have as well. I know you're growing your team too. So I don't know if you're, are you hiring right now? Should we put that out there too? Uh, we are, <laughs> <laughs> we're always looking for amazing collaborators to work with. And, you know, that is also really interesting too, that like, you know, your team is about 18, 20 people. Mine is about nine at this point. And I think something I, I, I found very interesting about what we're doing too, is there are some leaders who come out with goals of like, I want, I want to have a company with this many employees or this much in revenue. And what I found has been the most helpful for me actually is setting the goals of the feeling. I want the content and the output and the team to feel this way. Mm. And I want the message to hit here mm. first. And whatever resources or lack of resources it takes to get there is what I'm most interested in. And I think that's been very interesting to kind of undo some of those traditional entrepreneur mindsets or, or even mindsets that have been ingrained into society. Yeah. And, and, and I, I think it's really cool how we can kind of do it our own way and not have to go through that for sure. Hi hierarchy. I For guess. sure. I, I think we've out to both of our horns here. I think we've both figured it out where it's about like the quality of the camera shot and the editing can only get you so far. We both have that. And, and that unfortunately, it's what helps gain legitimacy among the more traditional folks. Mm -hmm. But the thing, the secret sauce of both of our companies and productions is that we tell great stories and it's all about the storytelling. It's all about the narrative and, and sharing what's best for the audience. So when our team goes in and, and looks at your stuff, we're like, yeah, she really at the end of the day, she's just a really, really good storyteller. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Steven. And likewise to you too. I, I think that's what our industry is showing is that story really is key and it, and sto a story can be told in a six second vine mm -hmm. or a one minute TikTok, or it could be told in a two sentence tweet, you know? Yeah. I appreciate that this internet world is putting pressure on how we have defined stories previously. For sure. Well, Steven, I'm so that. happy we got a chance to catch up. Like selfishly, I was like, yes, I get to see Steven tonight. <laughs> so this is awesome. And I'm just happy to see someone who I think is really well-intentioned and good-hearted succeeding. It's, it's amazing. You as well. You deserve all the success. So. Yeah, thank you for chatting. And Here we are. This and is then the universe I, I hear there's together. an after party, so I'm going there next. <laughs>